Hi everyone, it's Becky here. Welcome to another new tutorial video on my YouTube channel. And today I'm going on a little trip to Point Claire with my parents. So Point Claire is a little village west of uh, Montreal. It's about one hour bus ride from where I live in Montreal. And we're just gonna get off near a park. And uh, first of all, we're gonna walk around this little community. There's a lot of nice little houses and there's a garden shop over here. Yeah, I love the uh, flowers and trees and plants in Montreal. And there are, there are also lots of ice cream shops in Montreal. And just a street corner. That's a very nice house here. Lots of people cycling on this nice sunny day. There's a cafe there. And here we're walking around the bank of St. Lawrence River in the park. And it's really funny that all of these ducks are males. I wonder where the females are. And there's a church by the water. That's a very tall steeple. And after a while, we came back to this corner of the street. There is actually a lot of picnic tables on the other side here and I got a cup of latte and two scones from this cafe called Studio and I'm gonna sketch this house in front of me. I just really like it. And by the way, the scones, the blueberry scones and the raspberry scones that I got taste so good. It's the best with the latte. And here's my very minimalistic sketching materials. Sitting in the uh, shade under a tree, I'm ready to start my sketch. So as always, I like to begin drawing with my waterproof ink pen. Right now, I'm using Etcher Fine Liner Pen. It's a small felt tip pen. So I'm beginning with the left side of the house because I'm right-handed. I like to start drawing from the left side. And here on the left, part of the house is being obstructed by this... Uh, uh, electricity pole. Oh, actually, this is actually a lamp. So I really want to get this lamp done before moving on to the right side of the house. And there are two flower baskets balancing on top of the lamp. Hooks on the, on the left and right. And I want to just color this lamp pole in with black ink. So it kind of uh, separates with the house really well. And it, because this is also in the foreground, I like you know, things in the foreground to look stronger. And dense black color is really a nice way to bring it forward. Keep drawing the hooks on top of the pole and then keep connecting the position of the window in relationship with the height of the lamp and then drawing this flower clusters yeah, using squiggly lines to show the texture of leaves and flowers. And strings. Yeah, and right above, on, on the right side of the flower basket, this is this triangle rooftop shape. Okay, and there's a diamond shape beside it. Keep drawing around the middle part of the house the balcony in the middle. Yeah, so the balcony is right, right around the middle part of the lamp pole. So the lamp pole is a really nice, uh, kind of like a ruler to align the other things on the house. There's another lamp on the other side of the street. There's one little lamp on the left side and another one on the right side. Kind of like a little scale. Yeah, put it a little higher and keep connecting it. Behind these two little lamps, there is more shapes. Yep, the eave, the thickness of the eave. And then we're gonna draw bushes in front of the house. So now I'm just drawing the porch area, these posts supporting the porch area and some little hanging flower pots 
up there just keep connecting one thing after another and yeah another post over here and a little balcony around this porch area on the first floor another post supporting the middle part of the house little bushes around the front door drawing the front door yeah as you can see a lot of these shapes are rectangles after the big shapes I just fill in the details very simply inside like a lot of vertical lines for the balcony railings and then drawing these stairs yeah some more vertical lines and the texture of the roof drawing the windows on the second floor and the frames I like to color in those uh, glasses with black ink inside the window just to show the density of the house better now I'm just gradually adding some more textures the roofing on the uh, roof of the house more vertical lines to show the balcony the balcony door on the second floor another window there's a curtain in between the curtain there's dark black gap just adding these little lamps and then drawing the frames inside the door yeah and the railings of the balcony on the first floor this house has a lot of interesting structures and adding some more hanging flower pots here and there apparently this is actually a massaging and physiotherapy place okay so the drawing of this house is pretty much done now I need to deal with the overlapping um, there's actually a, a huge bush on the right side of this house as you can see I'm just gradually adding the uh, foliage texture using very simple and abstract squiggly lines there's windows behind these foliage more posts vertical lines to show the railings and there's actually someone walking walking by on the uh, sidewalk yeah drawing people is pretty important to show the proportion of these houses these this house is looking larger with this little person drawn on the right side yeah keep adding some more railings on the outside of the house and now, now just drawing these traffic signs so Point Claire is an English speaking community as you can see the stop sign that says stop in English and not in French yeah and after that I'm drawing the sidewalk so after that, I want to finish drawing the trees on the left side of the house. Okay, using very loose lines to draw the form. So usually most of the foliage, it doesn't have a definite shape. Especially when it's windy, you can't really tell the exact shape of trees and bushes because they're moving in the wind. And now I'm just drawing these branches and twigs showing in between those foliage and drawing these electricity wires overlapping on top of the house so yeah don't don't be afraid drawing these lines because they do actually exist in cityscapes yeah and adding some final polish that's pretty much it for the line drawing and here's the look of the finished line work it took me about 30 minutes okay so now it's time to add color and spice of life to this sketch so as always when painting a landscape or cityscape i like to start painting the sky first because it's on the very back everything is overlapping on top of it so i just wetted the sky area first with uh, clear water so the blue can blend on here very smoothly spread out without any dry brushing marks so here is cerulean blue mixed in with a little bit ultramarine blue and the direction of my brush stroke is kind of following the air movement in the sky that i feel 
it's actually a cloudless sunny day but i still want to keep the sky very loose and free flowing and not looking way too dense so the sky very much like water it's actually moving all the time because there's air turbulence happening all the time even though the sky is looking just pure blue there's no clouds in it i can still feel the movement it's actually inspired by van gogh's starry night there's lots of movement in van gogh's starry night painting okay so now i'm going back to the drawing and add some little details that i forgot to add um yeah the little uh, bricks on top of those windows and using very gentle lines to draw the texture of bricks on the exterior of the house but i forgot so now it's not not late to add any further line work okay so after that i think i'm gonna paint the first layer for the foliage so again just wetting the area first with clear water so adding a bit more water because it's a bright sunny day the water and the paint is going to dry up very quickly and then putting on some lime green mix it with a little bit of lemon yellow so really bright fresh green for the first first layer for pretty much every single piece of uh, trees and bushes and flower pots yeah so punching on this color very loosely as i feel very impressionistic a little bit more lime green so every brush stroke is looking different can't really create two exact same brush stroke the same brush mark again every single brush stroke can be full of life and first layer for the building it's a warm yellow brown so i mix yellow ochre into a little bit of orange and a little bit of burnt sienna yeah, and painting in between the railings as well. Yeah, and again, painting very loosely, not worrying about painting inside any shapes. These colors should be really free flowing and not being constricted inside any shapes. And quickly mixing. The color for the second layer is a yellow ochre mixed with a little bit of uh, brilliant green. Yeah. So again, as you can see, every single brush stroke, the shape is different and a bit of color is not exactly the same. They're similar, but every single brush stroke, the color is different. And this is how we humans paint. We cannot make uh, the same brush stroke with the exactly same color ever again. And that's how we make our paintings very lively. Yeah, same for this area. A lot of loose brush strokes using different pressures, mostly big and small dots pushed down on the surface. And I like to preserve my brush strokes because it shows the texture of the foliage better. Yeah, so just save your brush strokes when you're painting trees and bushes. And then just uh, painting the first layer of the sidewalk with yellow ochre. It's a sunny day, so if you look at the uh, sidewalk on a sunny day, they don't look gray. They shine a little bit of a warm, muted yellow. And leftover bluish purple here and there for the roof structures of the house here and there. Yeah, so I mix this very light gray tone with a mixture of blue, green, and magenta and dilute it with quite a bit of water. Yeah, so it's not way too dense. Same for the street, the same color combination, blue, green, and magenta. You can use any kind of blue, any kind of green, and any, any kind of uh, red pink. Yeah, and now just getting ready to paint another layer for the house slightly denser grays mixed with um, less water in that gray mixture painting the red stop sign yeah so the red on a corner is really draws attention in 
and just painting the windows with the leftover gray as well. Switching to my smaller medium tip Sakura water brush and then painting these chairs around the patio area in the front of the house. Yellow ochre mixed with burnt sienna to paint the pole, the uh, electricity pole there. Yeah, so right now I really like the balance of warm yellow browns in contrast with the green foliage and the blue sky. Now, third layer for the foliage is uh, red and green mixed in with a little bit brown or burnt sienna. So now this green is looking pretty dense. Again, using different brush strokes. This is almost wet on dry. So the brush marks can stay nice and solid and not dissolving with a super wet paint. Yeah. So now there's a little bit more contrast with this denser green added. Just a bit here and there as I see, as I feel. And not over adding this color because we want to preserve the bright, fresh greens of the uh, foliage areas brightened up by the sunshine in between the shade areas. There should be a nice balance. And adding some more grays here and there around the bottom of the uh, railings. Bit of shadows from the railings. And then now I'm just going to add the canopy of the tree right on top. This is the tree that I'm sitting under. Again, using choppy little brush strokes to show the form of leaves. The first layer, yep, it's a fresh lime green mixed with lemon yellow. It's a bright sunny day, so yep, that's the brightest color of trees. Second layer, again, play around with uh, the shape of brush strokes using different hand pressure. So it's kind of like Calligraphy. And this is a more intense green. For example, you can use verdant green. Verdant green, mix in a little bit of yellow ochre. And every again, every single brush stroke can be a slight different color. And I'm doing this in accordance with my understanding that, you know, we can't really find two leaves in a world that's looking exactly the same. Can't really find two leaves, you know, having exactly the same vein patterns, exact same colors. It's not really possible because this is how nature works. Nature don't create two things that look exactly the same. Yeah, and that means we don't have to be perfect because nature is not not hundred percent perfect. Yeah, just play around with the brush stroke the denser green on top of the uh, the lighter green. And adding some more dark shades of green in between the house structures and then adding some magenta for the flower baskets. Yeah, there's a nice uh, bit of red flowing around starting with the stop sign and those red flower baskets and the red chairs. Yeah, that's interesting repetition. Okay, so right now it's very much the uh, final polish stage. So I'm just checking if I missed painting any other little things like the flower uh, baskets. You should add these tiny little dots of red to show the color of flowers in there. And yeah, the red really pops up nicely from the greens and the yellows. Yeah, very small and tiny, almost invisible brush strokes. And adding some stronger shades for the roofings. And now I'm just taking a little break, just buffering and checking if there are any more colors and values that I need to add on. So now I'm just adding some very tiny little sh brush strokes to show the brick texture using brown. For example, burnt sienna or you can use raw umber. 
to sew the bricks. And same for the roofing. Adding a little bit accentuation for the thickness of the sidewalk. Adding shadow for the little people. Yeah, I'm just gonna leave the left side, the bottom of the left side, very loose. And here is the look of my finished sketch. The watercolor took me another 30 minutes. So this is a one hour sketch. So thank you for watching this video, everyone. If you like it, please click like and leave me a comment below. Subscribe to my channel for weekly updates. And if you wanna learn more about urban sketching, I'm teaching three urban sketching sessions in July and you can join me live on YouTube. And the link to sign up in, is in the description part of this video. And I will see you again very soon in the next video, everyone. Have a great day.